So today I'm going to do a quick video on the Oricom DTX 4200 UHF radio. This is the radio I chose for my vehicle. Uh, a couple of reasons I chose this one. One was the dual channel receive. I think that's a, a very good feature. And the second one is I like the uh, user friendly handset with the, the turning dial. I'll show you in a minute how that works. But I think that's quite nice to be able to do it in one hand. Anyway, before I get into um, the actual controls and how the unit works, uh, I actually bought the Outback Value Pack, which comes with the ANU 913. That is a 3.1 dBi antenna. Um, and obviously it's all personal about which antenna you want from where you, where you ride. One of the things I did look at is you can change the antenna over because it does detach from the base. Anyway, I'll take you through that now. So the radio itself, I ended up, as you can see, putting it inside the vehicle, um, just in the footwell. And the reason for that was, uh, this is a Prado, by the way. Um, the reason for that was I didn't really want to start inserting it underneath the dash or underneath the footwell, hidden behind panels. Uh, because it's a, it's a big job and to be honest with you it has a speaker on the side of it so if I show you down here you can see there is a speaker on the side so actually it's quite nice to be able to use that as a second speaker and it's tucked away quite nicely there I also did it there because if I ever do put in a second antenna and you'll see in a minute why I'm talking about second antenna uh, I can get at the antenna connection more easily in the future uh, I actually find it fits in quite well here. It doesn't get in the way of my legs So uh, I actually found it been pretty successful there and as I said, it was a lot easier to put it in there than um, uh, Hiding underneath So the it comes with electrical cable with a fuse on it. I've connected that to my auxiliary battery It wasn't quite long enough to reach back to here. Uh, I had to extend it by probably about 20 centimeters um, but anyway, no problem. And the nice thing about this is it all just tucks in nicely underneath and goes behind uh, and then reaches through to the um, battery. So as I said, the antenna I chose, um, and I'm gonna take you up there now. I actually chose, I'll get to get behind the sun, uh, the to put the antenna on the roof. Now, that's easier said than done, I know, with most people. And I appreciate it's a difficult place to be mounting it uh, based on roof height um, but I didn't really want it on the front of the vehicle I don't want to be staring at it all day long I know it looks good on the front of the vehicle but um, again you have to remember that we're all different we all use vehicles in different ways myself we only go off on occasional trips so a lot of the time I don't actually use this so what I did was I bought this, um, the Oricon bracket that comes, uh, um, that they do, that actually allows you to collapse the antenna down. So what you do is you literally just pull that out and then you can let the antenna down and now the antenna is flat. So uh, that way now, most of the time I carry on driving with the antenna in the down position and I'll get you up there to have a look at that. So basically, um, it there, it's flat in there and you can see I've actually put some extra silicon on the bottom of the cable connector just to really seal it up whilst it's laying flat. But that way it stays very flat with the roof line like that and I don't generally need to have it up day to day because I don't use the radio day to day. I only use it when I go off on trips at which point clearance is not normally an issue with that and if it were I can put it down and interestingly I find this amusing with it in the down position the radio still works quite well <laughs> so that bracket is actually the Oricon BR600BK it's not a cheap bracket uh, it's paid about $90 here for it in Australia it's incredibly uh, robust i'm actually very impressed with the build quality of it it is quite heavy um, but i guess it's got to be strong it's got to latch the antenna down in that position so uh, I, I do understand why you would do that 
uh, and why it would be so strong uh, whilst the antenna is in the down position so as I said you can it does actually unscrew off here so you can take this piece off it's got an allen key holding it in place at the moment so I won't take it off so you are actually left with this much of the base if you took that piece off and if you buy another antenna you can actually get a whip that actually so this is a 3 dbi i could in theory uh put on the 6 dbi whip onto this i could unscrew this and put it on if i really wanted to change it around uh and use it on here and the reason i was talking earlier about potentially having a second antenna would be that if i was driving through bush and stuff a lot if i start to do a bit of that but I'm not at the moment, but if I were, I might want to mount another, maybe another one of these onto the uh, onto the bull bar if needs be. But that's down the track. At the moment, I'm quite happy with this because it keeps it well out of the way during the day when I'm using the vehicle and when I park in the garage uh, and not really a problem. Uh, and it's, a, it's certainly a really useful bracket. I think it's well worth the investment. And as we all know, the best place for an antenna is on the roof. So... Uh, you know, and that's why I chose with the 3 dB to put it on the roof because once the antenna's on the roof, you will get much better signal. And all the all the testing that I've seen by people, really, you do get a lot better signal forward and backwards behind the vehicle. And you know what? So I would say for most of my use cases, the 3 dBi is actually suitable. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, let's see how we go anyway. So there's not a lot to tell you about the radio, uh, but anyway, I'll give you go through some quick instructions. Um, it does come with obviously instruction book. It's uh, I don't think their set of instructions is very good. To be honest with you, it covers the basic functionality, but uh, and I'm not going to go into any more than the basic today. One thing I will say is that when I wanted to try and do something more complicated with it. I did try to contact Oricom support and they, they knew very little about this radio. Uh, they only knew what was in the instruction book, to be honest with you. This is the latest version of it, but still, I was a little bit disappointed with their level of expertise. Um, but uh, And the book doesn't make sense in a couple of areas and they agreed with me on that. But anyway, they did try. Uh, I'll give them that. Anyway, so, uh, as I said, dual channel receive. So, at the moment, you're seeing channel 18 on the screen. Uh, it's set for two channels, and if you press the swap button, you'll see that it jumps over to 40. So, those are the two channels that it's currently receiving. So, we swap back to 18. I can hear everything on 18, and I can hear everything on 40 coming in at the same time. Uh, you can only transmit on the channel that you're looking at on the screen. So obviously now I can only transmit on channel 18, even though I can hear both channels at the same time. Uh, and if you want to transmit on channel 40, you have to swap to 40 and then you can transmit on 40. So it's pretty simple. Nothing difficult about that. Um, so um, what we can do is uh, if we go back to 18. So if you're on a channel, your volume is here, so just by turning the dial, that turns up the volume of this channel that I'm looking at. So channel 18's volume is now going up and down, so that's how you control that. The, the second channel, you have to press this button three times, and then you can turn the volume up of the second channel up or down. And that's quite easy to do with your finger once you remember the commands because you can literally control the, the second channel if it gets too noisy you can turn it down quite happily um, the the other functions are all through the menu by pressing the scroll wheel you can change the channel so um, so as well as the volume we go into it and we press once on it we change the channel and we can go up into a different channel um, and uh, and then the second channel still remains as your swap channel okay if I want to change my swap channel you go over to the swap channel and you change that as well so however you leave them between the two um, menu look I'm not going to take you through all the menu functions you've got the standard one so if you press it twice you get your squelch value um, and then if you keep pressing you get into uh, different uh, options. So in the menu here, 
so um, you can go I'm not going to go through all these but your menu options are here and it, they sh the book does take you through the menu options you've got all the different colors which I guess some people think is cool can't be bothered with it um, but uh, then then you actually have a, it does have an auto off as well which I think is fantastic so um, so you can set an auto off for up to four hours I believe um, so that's really cool because you know if you like me you got it on the uh, I've got it on the auxiliary battery so I've set it on four hours just in case I forget it um, but it doesn't really matter but it's quite nice it'll auto switch off if you're not using the radio so that's about it there's not much else to say about the radio that's the Oricon DTX 4200 um, and thank you for watching